So when I saw that email, first off, I thought it was spam, number one, because I'm like, it was like an, a lot of caps. It was just a lot going on. But they had personalized the email. They had my email in there, my email address. They had my full name, I think my phone number, my social media handle. And when I had got on social media, I noticed that the woman who emailed me, she viewed my LinkedIn page. She sent me messages on my business Instagram and my personal Instagram. So I knew it was real. She even called me, y'all. She called me. And when I had got the email, I was like, uh, they're gonna have to wait because the 19th was just a busy day for me. And I just needed to give myself some time to focus on one thing at a time. So when she called me, she's like, I sent you an email, I reached out, I really want you to be on the, the TV segment. I'm like, okay. Like I had never heard of our voices or Voices of America at all, y'all. A random blessing from God, y'all. Like, although I didn't get paid to be on the TV segment, I now have footage from that TV segment to showcase and really let people know, like, I am an expert. I'm the real deal. I'm on the news. Although I, don't, I didn't need that, but it was very helpful to have it. Especially now that my business is slightly different. My focus is a little different. My vision for SCB Luxury Styling is slightly different. Like the words that I'm speaking now are very different from what I was talking about years ago. So it gave me the opportunity to have this segment to like just really share what SCB Luxury Styling is all about now. And now that I work at MM LaFleur, I was able to pull pieces to showcase from MM. I was able to pull pieces. I was able to style one of the hosts, y'all. It was so, it was, we haven't even gotten to January 26th, but that was the day where the TV segment took place. And it was just such an amazing opportunity. I'm so thankful and so glad. And it came out of nowhere, y'all. Nowhere. God really, really moves fast. And he knows what you're trying, what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish. And he puts it in us. Those things that we're working to accomplish, those things that we want to do, he puts that in us. And then he sets us up for success. So it was just crazy. On Saturday, January 20th, I had four appointments with clients at MM and they all purchased. They all purchased. And this isn't something that is unheard of, but lately it has been a lot of clients who no show me, a lot of clients who come on the call and they're excited to see new clothes, but they don't shop or they're just not ready to invest. But this particular day, all of the clients who I had appointments for or appointments with, they all shopped and all purchased. I was also able to run errands and buy everything that I needed. It's in the minor details, y'all, the favor. There have been points and times where I would go to Target or I would go to Walmart or I would go to the grocery store and I would have to pick and choose what I wanted to get because I just could not budget for everything. When I was able to go out and run errands that day, I could afford to get everything on my list. Everything. Y'all, it felt so good. It felt so good. On Sunday, January 21st, I secured my first client for 2024. So, Stacy, the woman from MM LaFleur, who booked the Style breakthrough, breakthrough Session and was ready to move forward, finally paid me and she became my first client of 2024, y'all. After not having clients for over a year, I booked my first client of 2024 in January, my birthday month. It was such a good feeling. It was such a good feeling, y'all. I'm so excited, I, I wrote, I'm so excited but nervous at the same time. Also found a really nice coat at the thrift store. So that Sunday, I had went um, thrifting with my mom and more favor. I love coats, I love jackets, that's like my thing, blazers, all that. And it's not that I needed a coat, but I kinda wanted a longer coat, a longer puffer coat. And I had been wanting one for a while, but it wasn't something that I was like looking for. But when I seen this one, I had to have it. This was a Calvin Klein long puffer coat, chocolate brown, y'all, chocolate brown. And, even more favor. So I'm not really a hood girl. Like I like hoods, but I have short hair, so I really don't like wear hoods over my head. So most of my coats just have like a stand up collar. And it's just my preference, that's what I like. 
So when I find coats with that, I'm like, yes, it has the type of collar that I like. This coat had that collar. It also had a belt. It zippened, it fit perfectly. Took it to the dry cleaners, brand new. Brand new, that coat was $30, y'all, $30. If I had bought that coat like at a regular store or wherever, it probably would have been like over 100, maybe $200. The coat was $30. I had to have it and I found that at the thrift store with my mom. On Monday, January 22nd, I spoke with Patrice about becoming a financial advisor and decided to move forward. This wasn't a thought in my mind at all for this year until the opportunity presented itself. I pray that I didn't make the wrong decision. I also received the money from my first client. I transferred the money from my tithes to my PayPal account. I connected with Patrice at the end of 2023 and I didn't have any intention on like, actually my intention was to make her a client of mine. Y'all, I became a client of hers. As a financial advisor, she helped me open up um, a mutual funds savings account. I've already had investment accounts before, but she helped me open up a mutual fund savings account. Um, she also helped me to get life insurance again, which I've had before too, but it fell through. Um, 2022, I want to say it fell through. So I was able to get life insurance again through Patrice. And what else did I do through her? Oh, the debt pay down um, plan. So when I, I had actually was on the Primerica, like in my account, looking at the money that I had and on the side of the screen, I saw that it said something about reaching out to your advisor to set up a debt pay down plan. Now, if you know me, you know, I have over $100,000 in student loan debt. It's going down, so it's like 99,000. And I've had student loan debt since graduating from college in 2015, started paying it back in 2016 was on a payment plan from 2016 to 2020. It took me four years to realize that that payment plan wasn't doing anything. Literally, barely put a dent in the amount that I owed and I was really only paying interest. So when I realized that in 2020, I gathered myself because <laughs> I was very angry and I said, okay, no longer, no more payment plans. I'm just gonna create my own payment plan. So fast forward, I was able to consolidate my student loans because I had loans with Navient and I also had loans with Wells Fargo and both of them are private loans. So none of that Biden stuff applied to me because private loans are completely different from federal loans and all of that. So I have been paying my loans from 2016 up until now. 2020, I realized it was some BS happening and I was able to consolidate my student loans. I want to say at the top of 2021, if not 2022, I consolidated them with a um, company called Lenkey. Shout out to Jasmine who actually told me about Lenkey because I had no idea what Lenkey was. And I was able to go through the process and get set up on Lenkey. Now, I say all that to say, I still had a lot of student loan debt, but my monthly fees were a little bit lower than what I was paying before. So with that said, this year, year 30, I really wanted to focus on really paying my student loan debt down. It was hard for me to do it in 2023 because I was out of a job and my business wasn't doing much and I was on unemployment, but I was still paying it obviously, but just paying the minimum. So fast forward to Patrice, we were able to set up a financial debt uh, plan for me and um, on the call, she was. I was telling her like, you know, it's just annoying to still be in this situation at the age of 30, number one. I've been paying student loans since 2016. Like it's just been so long and I'm just ready for them to be gone. And it's just a lot. But you know, with my part-time job at Emma McClure, I get paid a decent amount, but it's not a ton. And then my business, you know, it's up and down, but now it's beginning to thrive a lot more. But I just want to, create more cash flow for myself so that I could have more money to pay back my student loans. And she brought up the idea of, of course, getting another job, da 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 da, da which was never what I was gonna do. But she also suggested like, why don't you do what I do? You can do it part-time, you can do it when you wanna do it, it's very flexible, but you do have to get your license. So, all right, I'll think about it. So, God kept putting it on my heart and on my mind like, you should do that. You should do that. <laughs> like this is an opportunity for you to make more money. And although financial advising may seem a little far fetched from fashion and styling, for me, money has always been a thing. So good and bad. 
I enjoy talking about money. I love like paying stuff off. Who doesn't? But I'm also very organized with my finances as well. And with that being said, I'll, I do it for myself, but I'm also excited to share and help other people, other black people to be able to do it too. But not just any black person. Well, obviously all the black people, but specifically entrepreneurs, specifically black women and black men that have a ton of student loan debt who want to pay it off. I want to be able to help them to become financially free. So I had hit up Patrice and I'm like, okay, I think I want to take on, you know, take your advice and start pursuing my part-time career as a financial advisor, specifically um, a life insurance um, agent. That's what they call them. So she's like, okay, I'm super excited. Um, typically it's like $150 for anyone to apply and sign on, but just this month, January, just this month is $74. And we're paying for you to take your test and we're paying for your license. I said, okay. Mind you, I had just got my uh, commission check, so I had the money. I had the money. So when she said all of that, I said, all right, you got me. I'm gonna do it. Y'all had my orientation last week with Patrice. I'm taking my class. I'm starting my classes this Friday, Saturday, and I'm gonna have to schedule another day because of my um, schedule. Um, I have something else going on, but I'm starting my classes this weekend, y'all, to get my license. Still very scared because I don't really know where this is gonna lead me, um, but I do know it's gonna help to bring in more money for me so that I can pay off these student loans. So I'm excited. And if you wanna learn about how to um, become an insurance, life insurance agent um, with Primerica, let me know in the comments because I would love to bring you on my team um, and just show you the ropes. And of course, Patrice will be showing you all the ropes because I'm new to this, but I'm also very true to this. So <laughs> when I become an expert, um, you already know. But yeah, y'all, it was a lot going on. Uh, oh, I was able to transfer out the deposit that my new client had gave me. Um, I received it in my checking account literally like the next day or the day after the next day. Sixteen Over $1,600, y'all, was the deposit for my styling service. And um, right now, I do not have a business checking account or a checking account for my business. I have a PayPal account. So at this point, I'm like transferring money in and out. It's very frustrating. Now that I have this client, I'm definitely going to open up a checking account for my business. But as of now, like until I decide which bank I'm gonna go with, um, I'm holding on to the money in my savings account. But I was able to remind myself to pay my tides. So I, at the time, I did transfer enough money out to pay my tides. Um, for that and I probably have to transfer a little more so I can keep up with the ties that I miss but aside from that yeah I'm gonna keep going on January 23rd I was able to confirm the dates for two upcoming workshops in the spring with a woman I connected with by the name of Mona and another woman her name is Kay so I told myself and have been speaking with God about wanting to get back into doing more speaking engagements, um, you know, really sharing my expertise and of course doing more in-person events and workshops. So he randomly gave me this idea to do one workshop with a woman by the name of Mona and it's like a style visionary workshop. She talks about vision and community and confidence and I talk about confidence and style and all of those things. So we're coming together to host a workshop in March for Women's Month. And after that, I had actually connected with a makeup artist and she's like, we should do an event together. I said, hmm, I'm already planning one, but I can definitely plan another. And it could be a two part series. So I was able to solidify the dates for that on January 23rd. And I also found out that I sold an ebook and sold two more tickets to the virtual workshop I was hosting. So I was able to solidify dates for two upcoming workshops. And I sold an ebook, y'all. So the Body Shape Bible, I had not sold any ebooks since basically releasing it for the most part. And I randomly sold an ebook. It was the ebook sold on the 19th. I did not see that I sold the ebook until the 23rd. 
because it's not like a, the platform I use is it doesn't notify you when someone purchases. You'll just see it like when you open it up and go in the platform. So I randomly sold the ebook and I was hosting. I also got the idea to host a virtual workshop to show stylists how to create virtual vision boards. And I hosted that workshop in January. Um, I can't remember what date it was. It was, oh, it was January 23rd. I hosted that workshop. And today, today was the 23rd. So that day I sold two more tickets to that workshop, y'all. Two more tickets. So I was just so thankful and just filled with awe um, with everything that had been happening. And I'm gonna keep going. On January 24th, I was able to pull pieces for my TV segment from my job, M.M. LaFleur. It just so happens that they have a showroom location in D.C. So I live in Baltimore. It's about an hour and some change away. So I was able to do that. And I was able to pull an outfit for myself as well. So more favor. Um, on the segment, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to wear. Um, I don't really want to wear what I have in my closet. Like I want to wear something fresh and new. So I was able to pull some pieces from M.M. LaFleur's most recent collection that came out um, January 16th. So still very new. On January 25th, I was able to go to TJ Maxx to find my client gifts to put in her welcome box. So with my new process, I now offer my clients welcome boxes. So when they sign on to become a client with me, I send them, I curate personalized welcome boxes that is just a nice little thank you for them to know that I appreciate them. And I was able to go to TJ Maxx and pull some things for her for her welcome box. And I was able to use a gift card, y'all. I used some of the gift card and then, of course, the money that she paid me the deposit with. But this was my first, like, real welcome box that I created. And it just felt so good to create it. I was able to also go to Ulta and get my sister her B-Day gift. And I also fearlessly sold $300 again into the Supernaturally Paid Ministry. So I had a gift card for Ulta that my parents had got me, but I decided to use it on my sister to buy her something for her birthday. How sweet. And then I also sold 300 of that deposit that I got from my business into the Supernaturally Paid Ministry. So since then, I've been like waiting to see like what God is gonna do financially. I mean, and he's still been doing things, but I'm still waiting for that big thing to come. So on January 26th, I had a, uh, a great segment. That was the day of the segment um, for the news, VOA news. And I met some amazing women. I was able to spend time with my boyfriend. He was able to come with me. He got really, really good content. Y'all probably already seen it thus far. And um, you're also going to see, you probably already watched at this point, the, um, the recap of that TV segment and behind the scenes and all of that so yeah and I even paid my business tithes the late one and I transferred a thousand dollars to my PayPal business account I really need to create a checking account this is what I have written here so I attempted to transfer a thousand dollars which I did but apparently it didn't go through and I didn't realize that until earlier this year so I guess that was God's way of saying hold on to the money until you open up your checking account because when you when I transfer it to PayPal and I open a checking account, I'm gonna have to transfer it out of PayPal, wait a few more days in order to see the money in my actual checking account to then open up the um, business account. So yeah, that was weird how that worked, but obviously God is still moving. So there was more that happened on the 26th because I wrote it down here. On January 26th, the makeup artist at the TV segment, she did not do my makeup, I did my own. She prophesied it against me, y'all. Like, she basically said that I will be traveling more this year. She said, I'm a boss. I mean, I already knew I was a boss, but she <laughs> confirmed, like, you're a boss. You'll be traveling more for work, so get ready for that. Y'all, this woman was a Christian. She was also from Baltimore. How? She also is from Baltimore County, from the Gwen Oak Woodlawn area. She said she was already talking to Jordan, my boyfriend, um, when I got in there. But she said, um, oh, me and your boyfriend are from the same place. I'm looking at her like, I'm from Baltimore too, what you mean? She's like, oh, I didn't know that. I thought he was, what part are you from? I'm like, oh, I live in Randallstown. 
She's like, oh, that's not far from where I am. That's so crazy. So crazy how I go to DC for a TV segment. All the hosts are like Nigerian, African. I don't know if they're from Baltimore or not. They didn't say. Um, but the one makeup artist from Baltimore. How? How does that work? And like I said, she prophesied it against me. She said that Jordan is the one, which I already knew. And she asked me if I was writing a book. She said, are you writing a book? I said, uh, no, but I thought about it and I kind of started writing a book, but this was years ago, y'all. I started writing this book in 2016 and I just put it on the back burner. I hadn't been thinking about it. She's like, write that book. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, okay. I mean, it was definitely something that I wanted to do, but I know it costs money with publishing, like all of that is very like, challenging and a lot but I'm gonna get to it here I said I actually started writing a book in 2016 2017 and never finished I wasn't even thinking about finishing it this year but I'm but I am 100% open to the idea I just hope I can find it on my Google Docs so I hope I can find it on January 27th we took my sister out to eat for lunch and had a great time and I'm glad I was able to get her a nice gift and that it was thoughtful so um we took my sister out for her birthday. Her birthday is the 29th. And we took her out on the 27th. And of course I was able to pay for her lunch and I ran some errands for her. And it just felt good to like give her the gift that I had purchased for her. It was a gift of like a bunch of different things, um, which we typically do for each other. So it was nice. Um, on January 28th, I was able to attend church and the message was about growth. I was also able to get a good workout in. So. All of these don't have a lot, all of these aren't tied to finances, but more so finances and favor. So days that I didn't technically make money or get sold into, favor. Um, and that's just how it works. Finishing out on January 29th, I completed all the tasks on my to-do list, which I felt good about. Y'all, like I told y'all, I'm an organized person, so I'll write down all my things that I'm going to do and planning to do I write all of those things down and I try my best to finish them all in one day but that doesn't always happen but this particular day I did I received the promo and final segment for my news segment so she emailed me the promo video and she emailed me the, the official news segment y'all days before it was gonna go live on TV so that felt good I still didn't watch it I need to watch it I also received a scheduled style breakthrough session and, and an opportunity to be featured on Mod Sense for Black History Month. This day was a great start to the week. So another woman reached out, inquired about my services. I emailed her a few times because I didn't hear back and she finally scheduled a style breakthrough session. Although she decided not to move forward at, to become a client, now that I'm charging for my sessions, I still got paid for my time. So it felt good. And Mod Sense reached out to me to feature me for Black History Month. So. I sent in the information that they were asking for and they paid me $25. So that was a great start to the day or to that week. The next day on January 30th, I was off work but still had a few meetings. I got a massage that day, which I had been wanting to get for months. I got a massage, which was amazing. Um, I feel like during my massage, God told me to go to the third. So the third is this black owned woman owned coffee shop and co-working space in Columbia. I had been wanting to go there because I wanted to connect with the owner because I want to host my workshops there. Y'all, I swore God told me to go to the third. As I was getting getting a massage, I was in and out of sleep. <laughs> and I hear, go to the third. Go ahead and go to the third. So I went, y'all, why was the founder of the third there? She was there. I was able to meet her in person, tell her about my events. Of course, she sent me a price list for how much it cost for me to host my events there. And God knows I'm really not trying to pay anything, but I was able to connect with her, so now she knows who I am. And I'm actually in the process of creating a proposal to send out to her to hopefully use the space for free or at least a discounted price point. Um, but aside from that, while I was there, she was giving me a tour. We walked towards the back of the co-working space and there's one woman sitting back there. And she's like, oh, this is Stephanie. Um, Stephanie, this is Kristen. She's looking at the space. Stephanie's like, I know who you are. I said, do you? She's like, yeah, I'm on your emailing list and I follow you on social media. I said, okay. 
She's like, I've been wanting to reach out to you because I'm hosting an event and I want to have a stylist on board. It was nobody else in that coffee shop, y'all, but Stephanie. How, when you're obedient, and I'm still working on my obedience, God knows, but when you're obedient and you do what he asks you to do, it's all for a reason. I would have never gone to the third. Well, I probably would have, but it wouldn't have been that day. But because I was already in the area, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna just go, it makes sense. The fact that the founder was there, and a woman who I've never even met before, but knew who I was, was there. I got a massage, which was amazing. And during the massage, I feel like I heard you say, go to the third. Well, I went since I was in the area and the founder happened to be there. I was able to connect with her while I was there. And I met a woman who already knew who I was and I was planning to reach and was planning to reach out. How crazy is that? I pray that it is meant to be that I am granted an opp the opportunity to be a part of her event and while I was there I also had a virtual coffee chat with another woman that I met at a networking event a virtual networking event who is hosting an event hosting her event in DC and she doesn't have a stylist on board so she wants to also have me to be a part of her event as well so I sent her my speaker one sheet which was also very nerve-wracking because on my speaker one sheet is my rate for speaking it's way more than my styling service. <laughs> and the woman didn't say that she had a budget, but she said she would get back to me within the next week or so. So if I don't hear back from her, I'm definitely gonna follow up. But yeah, y'all, yeah. Uh, I pray that it is meant to be that I am granted the opportunity to be a part of both Julian, her name is Julian, Julian and Stephanie's events. Also pray that if it is meant for me to have both workshops there at the third, that you will allow it to happen. Amen. So that's what I wrote on the 20, on the 30th of January. On January 31st, I received $25 from a Mod Sense feature for the Black History Month um, feature that they're doing. So I didn't actually receive the $25 when I submitted my um, responses. I got it a day later or two days later. I also submitted another Mod Sense blog to be paid. So I pray that I follow the guidelines correctly. I'm also not sure why my PayPal transfer is taking so long, but I pray that the money is withdrawn from my personal account today. So like I said, the transfer that I made to PayPal with, for the $1,000 never went through, although I got confirmation, an email confirmation. So I was able to make some calls that day and I found out that it never went through. So like I said, I'm, I'm gonna hold on to that money so that I can open up a checking account with my business. Um, also, I got the $25 for the ModSense feature. And um, I submitted another blog post to be paid, but they sent it back to me with some corrections that needed to be made. So I just submitted those corrections today. So y'all, January was lit, as y'all could see. And like I said, I continued writing through um, every single day what happened, um, whether it be favor or financial, but I'm, I'm gonna continue writing throughout the entire year, how each of my days goes. And I encourage y'all to do the same thing. If you do not have a journal or something that you take notes in or something that you, you know, write down what God has done for you in, get yourself a journal. This is a random journal I got from an event. But y'all, I have so many journals that I've gone through in the past, honestly, the past maybe five or six years. I've been, I'm a journaling girl. I had a diary when I was younger. So full circle, I now have a journal as an adult. Same thing, but different woman, different mindset, different all the things. So if you aren't journaling what God is doing for you and or just what happens to you on a daily basis, I encourage you to do it because it helps you to fill yourself with gratitude, one. Like when I read through those, I'm I'm reminded of all the things that God has done for me, what he's been doing for me and what he's going to do. And it's so crazy to read back, like to read the past, um, you know, entries that I've put and to know like what happened after the fact. So like I go in sometimes and I'm nervous, like mm, I'm hesitant, I'm nervous, but I'm expecting. And then after reading or going back and reading it, I'm like, I was nervous, but it worked out. Like, I had faith. Like, I knew that it was gonna work out. 
So I encourage you to do that. Like if you're not journaling, please start journaling y'all. Write out how you're feeling, write out how your day is going, write out what happened to you financially, write out what happened to you um, through God's favor. And I know that it will be a game changer for you and just really transform your way of thinking and really build on your relationship with God. So this was a lot, this was a lot. Hopefully I'm gonna have to edit this down so it's not super long. But I really, really hope that y'all enjoyed this testimony for the month of January 2024. And I'm excited to share my testimony for February, y'all. Today is February 4th, so we're just getting started for the month. And some great things have already happened that I have already written down. So I'm so excited to share February, um, February's testimony with you all next month. And yeah, I'll see y'all in the next video.